Okay, so buckle up. Today we're diving into AI. Oh yeah. But not the way you might think. Interesting. So what if instead of teaching machines to be smart, okay. We could make them smart by showing them like a really intricate puzzle. It's a fascinating idea, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what this research paper that we're going to be exploring today, that's what it dives into. We're tackling intelligence at the edge of chaos. Mm -hmm. Just the title alone has me hooked, I have to admit. Yeah. It sounds like something out of like a sci-fi novel, you know? It does. So walk me through this. What kind of puzzle are we even talking about? Okay, so imagine a line of cells. And each one is either on or off, like a string of lights. Okay. Each cell follows a simple set of rules to decide whether to switch on or off, just based on what its neighbors are doing. And that's what's called an elementary cellular automaton, or ECA. ECA, okay. CA. So I'm picturing like a, like a digital game of dominoes almost. Exactly. Some ECAs are super straightforward. Their patterns are predictable, like a line of falling dominoes. But others, they create these crazy, intricate patterns that seem impossible possible to predict just by knowing the initial setup. Wow. It's like organized chaos. And that is cool. Yeah. But how does this connect to AI and this whole intelligence at the edge of chaos thing? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. The researchers trained an AI model, GPT-2, yeah. on these ECAs. But instead of feeding it text, like it's usually trained on, they fed it these evolving ECA patterns. So instead of direct instruction, it's more like, here's a bunch of mind-bending patterns, figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. They basically wanted to see if the AI, by observing this complexity, could learn something fundamental about intelligence. Okay. And did it? Did staring into, like, you know, the abyss of ECA patterns make the AI smarter? Well, what they found is the AI models trained on the more complex, chaotic ECAs, mm -hmm. they actually perform better on totally different tasks. Things like solving logic puzzles and even predicting chess moves. Wait, seriously? You... Just from looking at these patterns, how is that even possible? That's the million-dollar question. Right. Remember, these ECAs are memoryless. The next state of the cells depends only on the current state. Okay. So, in theory, the AI only needs to learn that simple rule to predict what happens next. But it was doing more than that. Way more. The researchers found that the AI models that were trained on the complex ECAs, they were actually looking back at past states, not just the current one. Interesting. This suggests they were learning something deeper, some underlying logic or pattern, instead of just memorizing the basic rule. So they were picking up on something more fundamental just from being exposed to that complexity. That's the idea. Okay. It challenges the way we think about intelligence itself. Instead of force-feeding AI information, maybe the key is to create these rich, complex environments for them to learn from, just like we do. Okay, now my mind is officially blown. Yeah. So it's not just about the information, it's about the structure of that information. Exactly. The and there's a sweet spot. If the ECA is too simple, the AI learns a basic solution, but doesn't really learn to think. Too chaotic, and it's like trying to learn from pure randomness, which is impossible. Right. But find that edge of chaos, that perfect balance. That's where things get really interesting. This is incredible. But how do they even measure the complexity of these patterns in the first place? I mean, one person's chaos is another person's beautifully organized spreadsheet, right? You'd be surprised. Okay. They used a few different methods. But one of the key ones was something called Lempel-Ziv complexity. Lempel-Ziv complexity. Oh, Lempel-Ziv complexity. That was dense. It's actually a pretty intuitive concept. Imagine you have a string of letters, like a bob bob. Okay. That's a pretty simple, repetitive pattern. Even I can spot that one. Right. So it's Lempel-Ziv complexity would be low. Because oh. you can easily compress that string by just saying, repeat A, B four times. Okay, that makes sense. But a more complex string, like, say, the first few lines of Shakespeare, right. would have higher levels of complexity. Because there's less predictable repetition, it's harder to compress. Okay, so the harder something is to predict, the higher its levels of complexity. And they apply the same idea to the ECA patterns? Precisely. Yeah. The more random and unpredictable the ECA pattern, yeah. the higher its levels of complexity. And what they found is that there's a strong correlation between this complexity and the AI model's ability to learn and generalize to other tasks. So it really is about finding that sweet spot, that hmm. edge of chaos complexity. To unlock something more in the AI, this is definitely making me rethink everything I thought I knew about intelligence. Mm -hmm. And we're just getting started. You're telling me this research gets even more fascinating when we look at what was happening inside the AI models as they were learning. Oh, you mean like we're going to be peeking into the digital brains of these AI? Yeah. Tell me more. Okay, so we're peeking into the digital brains of AI now. Yeah. This is getting good. Yeah. What did they find in there? Did the AI trained on complex ECAs have like super powered neural networks or something? It wasn't about the size of the network. It was more about how it was being used. The researchers used a technique called center kernel alignment okay. or CKA. Sure. Compare the internal representations learned by the different AI models. Okay, pause for a second. Internal representations. Come back. Explain it to me like I like accidentally wandered into an AI conference and I'm trying to blend it. Okay, so think of it like this. Imagine we're looking at two brain scans, one from someone who trained on simple ECAs okay. and another from someone who trained on the more complex ones. 
CKA lets us compare those brains to see how they're representing information, how they're thinking about the problem. So we're seeing how the AI's thoughts are organized based on what they learned. Exactly. That's wild. Okay, so what did those AI brain scans reveal? Well, the AI models trained on more complex ECAs. They developed more distinct and specialized internal representations. It's like those AI brains built different neural pathways, more nuanced ways of thinking because of the complexity they were exposed to. So it's not just that complexity helps them solve tasks, it actually changes the way they think. Yeah, it really does. That's a game changer. And what's even more interesting is, the models that trained on the highly chaotic ECAs, the ones that were almost entirely random, their internal representations were more similar to those trained on the simple ones. Wait, really? Yeah. Shouldn't the chaotic ECAs have produced the most complex thoughts? Hmm. Because they had the most complex data. You'd think so, right? Right. But it suggests there's a limit to how much complexity is beneficial. It's like those AI brains got overloaded with the pure chaos yeah. and couldn't form those intricate representations. True. Too much noise, not enough signal. So it's like with our own brains. Yeah. Sometimes too much information just turns into overwhelm. Yeah. And we don't learn as effectively. Right, right. There's that sweet spot again. Enough complexity to challenge and engage, but not so much that it becomes overwhelming. Exactly. And that connects back to what we were talking about earlier. The AI models exposed to complexity, they weren't just memorizing rules. They were developing a deeper, more flexible understanding. They had to, to make sense of those more complex patterns. Right. right. But it makes you wonder, if AI can learn this way, are there parallels to how our own brains learn and adapt? That's a fascinating question, and one that researchers are still trying to fully understand. Yeah, but yeah. this research definitely hints at the possibility that our brains, shaped by evolution in a complex world, might have an innate capacity for finding order in chaos, for learning and adapting through exposure to complexity. Which, if I'm being honest, mm -hmm. makes me feel a little bit better about all the chaos in my own life right now. Maybe it's just building my brain power. But on a more serious note, are there any practical applications for all of this? How do we go from AI learning from digital dominoes to, like, real-world problem solving? Well, imagine AI that can help us understand and predict complex systems like never before. Things like climate change, traffic patterns, financial markets. Okay, see, now those are some applications I can get behind. So instead of just, like, replacing human jobs, we're talking about AI that can actually help us solve some of the world's biggest challenges. Exactly. Right. And not just solving those big problems, but also augmenting our own abilities, mm. helping us to see patterns and make connections that we might miss. It's that idea of man with machine again, working together to achieve something bigger than either could alone. Exactly. Right. But of course, with any new technology, there are always ethical considerations. Right. Because if we're talking about AI that can like, learn and adapt on its own, mm -hmm. How do we make sure it's used responsibly? That's a critical question, and one that researchers, policymakers, and the public all need to be thinking about. It's not just about building smarter AI. It's about building AI that's aligned with our values and goals as a society, yeah. which honestly feels like a whole other deep dive for another day. It definitely does. Right. But for now, I think this research gives us a lot to think about. We've gone from digital puzzles to the evolution of the human brain to the future of AI, all in one episode. And through it all. We keep circling back to this idea of complexity and the power it might hold to unlock new levels of understanding, both in machines and ourselves. It really makes you think, what if our brains are more like these AI models than we realize? What if we're wired for complexity too? And if we are, what does that mean for how we learn, how we solve problems, how we navigate an increasingly complex world? Now, those are some seriously thought-provoking questions, questions I think we'll leave our listeners to ponder. But before we wrap up, there's one more fascinating aspect of this research I can't resist digging into. So we've talked about AI learning from these complex patterns. We've even peeked into their digital brains to see how their thinking changes. But what really blows my mind is how this research challenges our definition of intelligence itself. Yeah, it really it really flips the script, doesn't it? Yeah. We tend to think of intelligence as something that's programmed, something we gain by like acquiring knowledge. Right, like our brains are just these empty vessels waiting to be filled with facts and figures. Exactly. Right. But this research suggests that maybe intelligence isn't just about the information itself, but about our ability to grapple with complexity, to find patterns in chaos. So instead of being hardwired with all the answers, our brains might be more like these AI models, wired to make sense of the world through complexity. Precisely. Think, Think about it. Our brains evolved in a world of incredible complexity. From the ecosystems we're part of to the social structures we create. Right. What if that very complexity is what drove the development of our intelligence? Whoa. So it's not just nature versus nurture. It's nature using nurture. <laughs> our brains are built to learn and adapt in a complex world. Hmm. And that complexity is what shapes us. It's a compelling idea, isn't it? Yeah. It could even explain why early childhood experiences are so important. You know, those early years when our brains are developing so rapidly, hmm. they're filled with new experiences, new challenges. It's like we're constantly navigating these mini edges of chaos as we learn and grow. Which makes you wonder, 
what if we designed our education systems around this idea? Yeah. What if instead of like drilling facts, mm -hmm. we focused on building those complexity crunching muscles? Now there's a thought experiment. Right. Imagine classrooms that are less about rote memorization and more about exploration and discovery. Instead of just giving answers, we'd be teaching kids how to ask the right questions, how to find patterns, how to make connections in a complex world. I wish I had gone to that school. Mm -hmm. But honestly, th this isn't just about formal education, right? right? This applies to how we learn and grow throughout our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Every new experience, every book we read, every conversation that challenges our assumptions, it all adds to the complexity of our internal models of the world. So maybe instead of fearing complexity, mm -hmm. we should be seeking it out embracing those moments that mm. force us to think differently. It's like that old saying, uh, smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Oh, I like that. It's the challenges, the rough waters that make us stronger, more adaptable, more intelligent. I love that. So the takeaway here isn't just about AI. It's about how we approach learning, problem solving, life itself. Complexity isn't something to be avoided. It's something to be embraced. It's the engine of innovation, the fuel for intelligence, and maybe even the key to unlocking our full potential as humans. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. Who knew we'd go from digital dominoes to the evolution of the human brain in one deep dive? I know, it's amazing. And it all circles back to this idea. What if complexity is not the enemy of intelligence, but its greatest ally? What if indeed? And on that note, I think we'll leave our listeners with that thought-provoking question. Don't forget to check out the show notes for more information on this fascinating research. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing and never stop exploring the beautiful complexity of the world around you.